Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, March 21st, 2021. We are still in Unit 1, which is entitled Faithful Prophets, Unit 1 for the Spring Quarter. And we are in Lesson 3 from the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly. Our lesson title is Seeking Wisdom from God. Seeking Wisdom from God. And our devotional reading is taken from Psalm chapter, I'm sorry, Psalm 25, verses 1 to 10. Our background scripture is taken from 2 Kings chapter 22. The entire chapter 22 is our background scripture of 2 Kings. And our printed or lesson passage is 2 Kings chapter 22, verses 14 to 20. And our key verse from the King James Version is, Because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heardest what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and has rent thy clothes and wept before me, I also have heard thee, saith the Lord. That's Second Kings chapter 22, verse 19. The lesson aims, from again, from the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly, or number one, analyze the prophetess Huldah's message from God for King Josiah. Number two, reflect on Josiah's behavior after hearing the words of the book of the law. And number three, seek godly advice about your future. The lesson has two divisions after the introduction. The first is entitled, A Rebellious People's Calamity. That's covered between 2 Kings chapter 22, verses 14 to 17. And the second division is entitled a pious king's consolation and that's covered between second kings chapter 22 verses 18 to 22 to 20 those of you who use the standard commentary the title of that lesson is prophet of wisdom prophet of wisdom and very quickly Additional aims are, number one, identify two major parts of Huldah's prophetic message. Number two, explain the key verse, that is verse 19 of chapter 22, in light of the Texas spiritual principles. And then number three, pray for seven national leaders by name in the week ahead, one each day. And that's something I hope that we do <clears throat> routinely. Pray for our national, local, and state leaders. Spiritual, political, judicial, military, all of them. Media moguls, corporate leaders, all of them who have an influence on our culture and our, our lives. And the way of uh, a little background uh, for our lesson... Uh, if you read all of chapter 22, then you read what leads immediately up to where our lesson text begins at uh, verse uh, 14 of chapter 22. <clears throat> king Josiah, uh, who uh, was one of the few godly kings of Judea who did uh, that, that was right in the sight of the Lord, uh, had come to the throne at the age of eight years old after his father, uh, Ammon, was killed after two years, the two years of reign. And, of course, Ammon was a wicked king who followed in the ways of his father, Manasseh, who had been uh, one of the most wicked kings uh, until <clears throat> he repented at some point near the end of his life. Uh, but he had uh, caused... Uh, 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 idol worship throughout. He caused idols to be set up in the temple. Uh, he sacrificed one of his own children. Uh, he was wholly given over to doing evil in the sight of the Lord again until uh, he repented uh, and um, 
that was you we can read about that in second chronicles thirty three verses ten to seventeen uh and then um he he was the son of Hezekiah, who, if you know your Bible was one of the godly kings uh of Israel of Judah rather of Judah as well, so Josiah was the grandson of Manasseh, great grandson of hezekiah uh and he was raised by um or influenced, I should say, from a young age by godly people. Uh, we know that uh, one of the one, uh, uh, people that had an influence on his life was uh, Jeremiah, who began his ministry um, in the 13th year of Josiah's reign, about five years before the events of our lesson text. Um, also, uh, Zephaniah, uh, who was a descendant of King Hezekiah as well, prophesied during the reign of Josiah. So they had influences, no doubt, on on the, uh, the young King Josiah. And the young King Josiah, even before the incidents of our lesson text today, uh, had begun to, uh, to cause uh, idols to be put away, to be destroyed. To, he, had, he had begun to reform, to uh, begin a, a return to the Lord and, and great godly reforms throughout Judah. In fact, uh, Second Chronicles 34 and 3 tells us at the age of 16, he began to seek after the God of David, his father. And as he, um, in his 12th year, in the 12th year of his reign, of course, when he was 20, he began to purge the land of all the pagan idols and shrines. We read about that in Second Chronicles 34, 3 to 7. So to, to bring us back closer to um, the immediate context of our lesson text. Uh, so Josiah now is 26 years old at this time, and he uh, orders his uh, high, or, I'm sorry, he instructs the high priest, I should say, uh, Hilkiah, to take money that had been collected uh, at the the treasury to the house of the Lord and give it to the the builders the 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 carpenters and the masons who were repairing the breaches or repairing uh the areas of the temple that needed repair and, and he tells them you know uh they are faithful men and you don't have to worry about uh counting every penny that you give them because they are they're doing a, a job in faith or faithfully. Anyway, long story short, so this uh, restoration work is underway, and Hilkiah finds a book, a book of the law. We're not sure exactly whether uh, it was the entire uh, Pentateuch. Some commentators believe it was the first five books of the Bible. Uh, some believe that it was certainly at least Deuteronomy because of uh, the curses of chapter 28, 29, and 31 in, in the book of Deuteronomy. So Hilkiah gives the book that he found to Japhon, who is the scribe, who is the king's scribe. And the king uh, takes the book to uh, Josiah and tells uh, him that, hey, during the course of uh, the repair work, we found this book. And the book had apparently been lost for uh, at least 57 years, most likely during the entire 55-year reign of Manasseh and the two-year reign of his son Ammon. And it may have been uh, purposely hidden by uh, idolatrous uh, priests or idolatrous uh, false, false priests uh, so that uh, no one would know uh, that they were doing uh, how far away from the Lord they they were in their idolatrous practices. So anyway, so now Japhon reads the book to Josiah, and the book no doubt speaks of uh, what the children of Israel were expected to do in the land uh, and how God would bless them if they did those things, but also the curses, how he would curse them if they did not do those things. 
again, read um, specifically uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 20, which reads, The Lord will send on you cursing, confusion, and rebuke in all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doing in which you have forsaken me. And also, um, 20, 29 verse 5, 29 verse 5, which reads, You have not eaten bread, I'm sorry, um, and I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Hold on, got the wrong, wrong verse here. It's actually 29 verse 25. And the people are responding. 25 and 26 said, Then the people would say, Because <clears throat> they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord, their father, the Lord of God of their fathers, which he made them when he brought them, made with them rather, when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. For they went and served other gods and worshiped them, gods that they did not know and that he had not given them, given to them. And so they're speaking of why God is going to judge them as he judged Sodom and Gomorrah in this uh, chapter 29, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 5 and 6. So uh, this is what was read, no doubt, to Josiah. And Josiah reacts very emotionally, I'm going to back up to verse 11 in Second Kings chapter 22, and it reads, Now it happened when the king heard the words of the book of the law that he tore his clothes. Then the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, and actually he was the high priest, uh, Achim, or Ahiakim rather, the son of Japhon, Achim, Akbar, rather, Akbar, the son of Micaiah, and Japhon, the scribe, and Isaiah, a servant of the king, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me, for the people of all Judah, and for the people of all Judah, for the words concerning the words of this book that has been found, for great is the wrath of the Lord that is aroused against us because our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book to do according to all that is written concerning us. Now that takes us through verse 13. So Josiah has instructed, he has actually delegated this uh, committee or this team, if you will, to go and seek a word from the Lord. He does not tell them where, but they apparently know who to go to to seek a word of the Lord. And that's where our lesson picks up. Uh, and I'm sorry for the very long-winded background there. But let's, uh, let's go to the throne and, and uh, then we'll proceed with our, our lesson, discussing our lesson text. Father, we do thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to study your precious word. We thank you for... Uh, the historical, though it is an historical narrative, Lord, it teaches us so much, Lord, about uh, your faithfulness to your word, Lord, your faithfulness to bless and, Lord, to judge uh, the disobedience of your children, Lord. Uh, we thank you that we can learn how you deal with nations, Lord, even this nation that you have so abundantly blessed as we commit sin, Lord, and we pray for our leaders. We pray for and not only our leaders, Lord, but we pray for your people, Lord, that you would give your people, that the redeemed of the Lord would say so and would speak out against the evils of our society, Lord, for which, Lord, you, uh, you will judge this nation, we are sure. But we just ask for your mercy. We ask for revival, Lord. We ask again for godly wisdom always for our leaders and certainly, Lord, for your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so we're going to um, begin with the first division of the Faith, Faith, Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly Lesson, which is, again, is entitled, A Rebellious People's Calamity. That's covered between uh, 2 Kings chapter 22, 14 and 17. And it reads, again from the KJV, 
So Hilkiah the priest and Ahiakim and Akbar and Shaphan and Isaiah went unto Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikva, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college, uh, and they communed with her. Verse 15. And she said unto them, Thus said the Lord of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah hath read. Verse 17. Because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. Um, let's back up to verse 14. So the committee the that uh, Josiah has appointed knows no doubt of this prophetess Huldah and she is um, believed to have been a relative of Josiah of not Josiah but Jeremiah Jeremiah and uh, one of a few female prophetesses in the Bible we know that uh, prior to uh, us learning of her Miriam uh, was said to be a prophet uh, we know that Deborah, uh, the, who was a judge, also was a prophet. We know that um, Isaiah's wife, who was unnamed, was also uh, called a prophetess as well. And so Huldah, we don't know uh, any more about her than what is, is said here. She is the wife of Shalom, and it gives uh, Shalom's father and grandfather's name here, and uh the grandfather was apparently the keeper of the wardrobe, I would assume, of the royal wardrobe. But she is known, and she's in, uh, it looks like, the new area of Jerusalem. Uh, and they know where to find her, and so they go there. And when it says they commune with her, it doesn't mean that they, uh, they have a uh, religious ritual or anything or a meal necessarily, but they just sit down and have a conversation with her. They basically tell her, <clears throat> I'm sure they found the book, what they read, what the book is. And then she begins to speak as a true prophet of the Lord, uh, or the Lord begins to speak through her, I should say. So, verse 15 says, And she said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of hosts. Lord is spelled all caps. Jehovah, the self-existing existing one. The Lord God of Israel, I should say, not host. And that speaks of his relationship with Israel. They were his chosen people. Obviously, he's the sovereign of, of, of all. But he had a special relationship with uh, Israel, having revealed himself to the world through Israel. And he, so she says again what is said more than 400 times in the Old Testament by prophets before they pronounce what the Lord has instructed them to, thus saith the Lord, to make sure that it's, they, they understand it's not her saying. It is the Lord that is about to speak to the one, the man who sent you to me. And uh, why she doesn't address him specifically in this verse, we don't know. And then she repeats, thus saith the Lord, behold. And this is to draw attention to what is to follow. This behold is to draw uh, all attention to what is to follow. She said, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah hath read. Now, again, uh, we don't know how much of the book uh, or what was contained in the book, whether, again, it was the five first five books of the uh, the Old Testament called the Pentateuch, or whether it was just portions like uh, Deuteronomy. And and if, if they read through Deuteronomy, 
uh, it was, it, which is would mean which means a second law read through all the instructions, all the law that God had given the generation, the adult generation that came out of Egypt. But it was a repeat of that for their children who were about to go into uh, take possession of the land of Canaan by Moses, including the curses, the blessings and the curses, uh, which were uh, enumerated in chapter 28, 29 of Deuteronomy. So he said, including all these curses, uh, they had forsaken God for many, many years. And as I said, uh, some 57 years and, and not including the few years after which Manasseh had repented, but Manasseh had done so much evil that as soon as he died, uh, his son began uh, to uh, to follow his earlier ways, his sinful, idolatrous ways. And of course, uh, he was assassinated and his eight-year-old son, Josiah, placed on the throne. So now we need to go back to uh, the context again, uh, to Josiah's reaction to his hearing of uh, these curses and the judgment that was to come. Obviously, he realized how wicked uh, Judah had been he had begun again to purge the land of idols and and all the uh, the trappings of idolatry, uh, and he knew about his father and grandfather and their wickedness and the wickedness of prior kings even, so he knew they had uh, that done just what God had instructed them not to do and just what God had promised to punish them for. Uh, and so he feared the worst. He feared the judgment, uh, and that's why he sent, he feared God's judgment, and that's why he sent this delegation to seek a word from the Lord. And of course, she is telling him, uh, "There's no escaping. Basically, this judgment it's coming. Just as I promised, God is saying, just as I promised in the book that you read, that the king hath read, verse seventeen, because they have forsaken me." and have burned incense unto other gods. In other words, they worshiped other gods. They made sacrifices to other gods, not just animal sacrifices, but also human sacrifices to these pagan gods uh, that they might provoke me to anger with the works of their hands. Well, the works of their hands was all manner of evil that they did in the worship of these gods. And actually, the making of these gods as well. You know, uh, uh, Isaiah humorously talks about uh, how the, uh, the a, a, a log was used, part, a part of a log was used to, uh, to make a fire to warm uh, a person. And part of it was used to make a fire to cook food, to cook flesh that he would eat. And then uh, part of the part that was left, uh, he fashioned an idol out of the stock of a tree. And he just he was mocking how they fashioned these gods out of out of wood and things that were used that that that, that certainly were no gods. Uh, and so God is 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 basically t talking about the evil works of their hand as it regards idolatrous practices. He said, therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and it shall not be quenched. So what he's saying is the judgment is coming. Uh, my wrath is going to be poured out on Judah. He said that Judah generally and this place, more specifically the temple, uh, Judah was destroyed as well as Jerusalem and the temple is what he's talking about. This place, Judah and uh, I'm sorry, Jerusalem and the temple. When he speaks of this place, that uh, that verse I was thinking of in I in Isaiah where he mocks the I, idol worshippers is, is from Isaiah forty four nineteen. Um, let's move into the next division which is entitled A Pious Consolation. We just finished A Rebellious People's Calamity. Uh, and again, God was judging, was about to judge 
uh, the nation uh, Judah, specifically Ju Jerusalem, and he was going to destroy Jerusalem and the temple. Uh, but more, I'm sorry, for all the evil that they had done over generations. And they were led to do evil by wicked leaders, by wicked kings. We know all of the kings of the northern kingdom, some 19, as I recall, were did that that was evil in the sight of the Lord. And we know that the Lord um, had the Assyrians uh, take them captive uh, in 722 BC. Uh, we know ultimately uh, Judah is going to be utterly destroyed in 586 BC. That destruction is going to begin in 605 when Nebuchadnezzar makes his first attack on uh, Jerusalem or Judah. So again, the the second division entitled A Pious King's Consola Consolation reads uh, that that division uh, covers the verses between 18 and 20. And we read beginning at 18, but the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall ye say to him, thus said the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard. Verse 19, because thine heart was tender and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord. When thou heardest what I spake against this place that is spake in his word. And against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse. And as rent thy clothes and wept before me, I also have heard thee, saith the Lord. Verse 20. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace. Then I shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. Let's back up to verse 18 again. So verse 18 says, but to the king. Now again, the Lord is still speaking through Huldah. Now he's addressing the man that sent you as the king of Judah, which is speaking of his leadership. Okay. Uh, he says, uh, part A says, but to the king of Judah, which sent you again to inquire of the Lord, thus shall you say to him. And again, uh, uh, this, this, this is a serious uh, matter that the, that uh, the king has sent these, uh, this committee rather to seek the Lord's uh, word, a word from the Lord concerning. And he's now speaking directly to him uh, about how he's going to deal with him. Part B says, thus said the Lord God of Israel as touching the words which thou hast heard. Now he's already pronounced the judgment on the nation. And, and, and in doing so, he is demonstrating his faithfulness and his righteousness, his faithfulness to his word and his righteousness. And now he's going to demonstrate his mercy uh, concerning the king and in response to the king's humility, how the king reacted to their sinfulness and the impending judgment that had to come. Okay, so he says, as touching the words which thou hast heard, verse 19 says, because thine heart was tender and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heardest what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse and has rent thy clothes, of course, which was a, a way of expressing uh, grief, great grief and lament uh, and wept before me also have I heard thee. So the Lord saw and heard the response of, said the Lord, of Josiah to the, the pronouncement of judgments, uh, that must have been what he was responding to, uh, to, and the judgment for the wickedness of his nation, for God's people. They were, they were doing just the opposite 
of what God had instructed them to do in the law. Okay. Now, uh, the king, again, was shaken. Uh, he demonstrated uh, great humility. He tore his clothes. He was shaken to his core, it says. He tore his clothes. And this is the response that we should have before a holy God. When our sin is exposed before a holy God, you know, we should, uh, we should experience great grief because of our sin, not just out of fear of judgment, but out of the, 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 the in contrast to his holiness and his righteousness. Uh, you know, as Peter said, when the Lord uh, performed a miracle, uh, after he, uh, with the catching of the fish, when he was first calling the disciples that would become apostles, he said, Lord, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. He recognized the holiness of Christ. And, of course, that exposed his sinfulness. When we see the holiness and the righteousness of God, we have to think about how sinful we are in comparison. So, anyway, so, the, so this, and this humility is really recognizing, I've, I've mentioned this many times in in our Sunday school classes, uh, humility is really recognizing your position, your station before God, an almighty and all holy God. You are nothing, you have nothing, and you can do nothing apart from God. So he demonstrates great humility. And we see throughout the Bible how God responds to uh, humble hearts. Uh, for example, James uh, chapter 4, uh, verses 6 and verse 10. Verse 6 reads, But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humility, we know, cures worldliness, as one of the commentators says here. And if we jump down to, to verse 10, we read, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. The Lord responds to humility with his mercy, with his love, and with his, his help, with his aid. Uh, now, again, he's talking about how uh, the, the land is going to be made a desolation and a curse. Uh, when, when, when he heard that, again, when Josiah heard that and the Lord saw his response to, to, to those judgments, how he responded, not just for uh, himself and, of course, the nation's uh, sinfulness, but the judgment that was to come for the people that were, were going to be judged if God was faithful to his word. And we know he certainly was. So verse 20, 28 says, Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace, Thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. So he is demonstrating his mercy toward Josiah because of his heart, because of the humbleness of his heart, and because he desired to do what was right uh, before God and desired to see this nation, his people, do what was right before God. He was a humble leader who put the Lord and his people first and the Lord saw that, and the Lord was telling him, uh, because of this, you're going to be gathered with your fathers. And that's another way of saying, as, as was said so often throughout the kings, first, first and second kings, uh, he was going to sleep with his fathers or the gathered, uh, it says, uh, to his grave in peace. Now, we might ask, those of you who have read uh, beyond uh, this chapter, we know that Josiah dies in, in battle. Uh, and so how is that how is that being gathered to your grave in peace? Well, it, it really means peace with the Lord and, and, and peace uh, not having seen or witnessed uh, what the King James calls the evil which he's going to bring upon this place. We're not talking about moral evil, obviously. We're talking about destruction. We're talking about devastation. We're talking about desolation. That's the evil that God is going to bring upon this place. So Josiah is going to be gathered to his grave and spared uh, seeing that. And we know that happens. That begins to happen some five years after 
after Josiah dies. Um, that's when Nebuchadnezzar makes his first foray into uh, Judah in 605 BC. We know that again, uh, Nebuchadnezzar makes his last attack on uh, Jerusalem in 586 BC. That's when the walls were were leveled and the the, the temple was leveled and, and the city was burned. Uh, and uh, that's the ultimate judgment. And the, and the cap and the final captives, those who were taken captives, were taken to Babylon. Now. This message that God gives to through Huldah to the king, it, it really confirms um, God's righteousness, again, his faithfulness, and his mercy, uh, his holiness and righteousness. I use those synonymously. Faithfulness to his word concerning the blessings and cursings. You know, God promised to bless uh, or to curse in Deuteronomy. Uh, the people, if they kept his law, he would bless the going out and the coming in. Uh, he would bless the crops. He would bless, and if they they didn't, if they forsook him as he said they would, then he would spew them out of the land and vomit them out of the land, just as he did the people before them. And of course, that he did that through the captivities, Northern Kingdom uh, using the Assyrians, Southern Kingdom using uh, the Babylonians. Uh, and God also, again, demonstrates uh, his uh, mercy, again, to those who humble themselves, typified by Josiah. Josiah humbled himself and as a result uh, went to his grave in peace. We know his great-grandfather Hezekiah did the same uh, when Isaiah came to him and told him, Thus saith the Lord, you know, get your house in order. You shall die and not live. And the Lord, uh, Hezekiah went before the Lord and humbled himself and said, Lord, I've done all this and I've done all that, please. And he just laid his heart out before the Lord and the Lord gave him 15 more years. Unfortunately, Hezekiah uh, showed some an ambassador from Babylon all the treasures of the temple and of course, uh, Isaiah came back and, and basically said, you fool, they're going to come back and, and take all of this, but you're not going to see it in your day. Okay. Uh, so the Lord allowed Hezekiah to go to his grave in peace before he saw the, the destruction that he might have begun to plant the seed for. Obviously, God had planned how he was going to judge Judah uh, many, many, uh, I mean, well in advance uh, of even Hezekiah's day. So uh, the final part of uh, verse 20, part B says, and they brought the king word again. Now, obviously, the king was, was uh, very disappointed at the judgment that uh, uh, was, he had first heard about as it was read to him by the scribe. That was confirmed. Uh, perhaps he was thinking maybe the Lord might be merciful, but uh, there was no getting around that. That judgment was coming. But there was a word. Uh, there was a, a word of mercy also for him. He would not see this evil day. So as we as we close uh, the lesson, I, I think we need to uh, be very fervent in our prayers for our leadership, both local, state, and national leaders. Um, and, and, and not only those with official titles um, as governors and, and mayors and, and, and presidents and, and all those who advise them, but all those who have tremendous influence um, in our culture today. Uh, we know the social media uh, uh, moguls uh, have tremendous influence in our culture and especially on our younger people. Uh, we need to pray for godly wisdom for them first and foremost, and that, and that they would judge and they would, uh, they would, uh, be righteous in uh, their governance and righteous in the works that they do that influence our culture. Much more could be said about that and the ways that we have uh, come so far from 
from God's righteous standards, and and we are getting further and further away every day uh, with sexual dysphoria, with abortion on demand, with same-sex marriage, with so many other things uh, that are contrary to God's word and will, and a day will come when if you even speak of those things as being contrary to God's word and will or evil in God's sight, uh, you will be condemned or canceled or maybe even in prison. Those days are perhaps coming and if they're not upon us already. So we need to, to, to pray and certainly for the wisdom of God's people that God would be able to discern the good from evil, from what is righteous in God's sight and, what, and the evils of our culture uh, that, again, God has every right to judge us for. I mean, we, we might even put Sodom and Gomorrah to shame today, you know. So uh, let's... Uh, again, remember not just to pray for ourselves, our immediate family, and our immediate circle, but to pray for those who have the, the governance and certainly influence uh, over all of our nation. So we're going to just uh, lift another word. Lord, we do thank you and praise you for, uh, again, uh, the understanding that you've given us of our lesson passage today. Uh, we pray that, Lord, we would see more clearly, Lord, your faithfulness to your word, Lord, as it relates to blessings and punishment or judgment, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we would pray more fervently, Lord, for those uh, who you've ordained, Lord, as uh, leaders uh, 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 over us, Lord, that you told us to pray for them, uh, for, for kings and for governors, Lord, that we might live peaceable lives, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you would make it so, Lord. And certainly we pray for the wisdom of your people again. We pray that you'd give them uh, discerning uh, hearts and spirits, Lord, uh, and, and help them to speak out, Lord, for righteousness, your righteousness, Lord, what is good and right in your sight, Lord, regardless of what the culture says, regardless of whether the culture says uh, evil is good and good is evil, as you said, that, that we would once do, the world system would once do. We just thank you again, and we praise you for the opportunity to study your word and to share your word. And we pray that all have getting, gotten some uh, greater understanding of it, Lord. We ask your blessings upon all the hearers, and we ask your blessings upon our entire church family, Lord, all those born-again believers. In Jesus' name, amen.